And good morning. All right, we're ready to start um, some reading uh, lessons. We're going to start out uh, today with a skill lesson. We're going to be learning about encyclopedias. Is that archaic to you? All right, so uh, you need your reader and your work text for this, but your reader is only two pages long. Okay, so experts in a particular field or on a particular subject that want people to learn about what they know about will write articles and then they're put in encyclopedias. I don't even know if encyclopedias are made anymore, but I have a set of encyclopedias here at my house. And when I have my children uh, research things, I have them research the encyclopedias before they use the internet. So I'm going to show you a picture. I took a picture of my set of encyclopedias. So I'm going to bring those up and let you see those. Let me make that a little bigger here. All right. This is on one of my shelves right here in this room where I uh, do my lessons. And as you see, this here, well, this is upside down. Someone put it in there upside down. But it's, uh, it's called the World Book Encyclopedia. Each one of these is a volume. And if you'll notice, let's take this one. This is volume number five. It covers the letter D. So everything D would be in here. You want to look up deer or the dodo bird, or uh, you could look up the Dunkirk or anything you can think of that starts with a D. Now, if you'll notice, volumes three and four both have C's. Volume three starts at C and it goes all the way to CH. Anything that comes after CH, like CI, would be in the second book, CI to CZ, or C, is it CZ? Yeah, CZ. Uh, Czechoslovakia is a country, I, think, I believe, that starts with CZ, so that would be in here. So sometimes when there's a whole lot of one letter that just would not fit into one volume, they'll break it up into two. The same thing is true over here with the S. S is broken up. If you'll notice Q and R and U and V and W, X, Y, and Z, each one of those shares a volume because there's not enough of each, so they share. So anyway, so that's what we look at. I just wanted to show you my set of encyclopedias and that I still make my children use them. But I've told you before, when I was a kid, those encyclopedias were my Google. So anyway, all right, so let's go ahead and uh, talk about something called a keyword. A keyword is something that you're going to look up. Now, if you were going to use the internet and you wanted to look up something about um, knee pain, you had pain in your knee and you wanted to know what it, what it could be, you would, type, you would type in probably knee pain. Now, if you had a set of encyclopedias, you couldn't look up knee pain, you would have to choose a word that would be your keyword, most likely knee. So your keyword is going to be your word that's the kind of like the main idea of a phrase, if you want to say it like that. So um, is there anything that you've ever just simply wanted to know more about? I bet there is. All right, let's look at these sentences because uh, we're going to read a short article about encyclopedias. It's very short. It's not long at all. Um, and these are some words that you're going to come across. This first one, a volume is one book of a whole encyclopedia set. And I just showed you the picture of mine. And each one of the books is called a volume. The long magazine article had many subtitles. Now, a subtitle is going to be, uh, if you look up the keyword, say you wanted to learn more about Brazil. And so you looked up Brazil. Well, in Brazil, uh, under the title of Brazil, you're going to have many subtitles. Um, that means it's a title of a section, but it goes with Brazil. So you might have food, Brazilian food. You might have Brazilian clothing, Brazilian uh, geography, or whatever. And so each one of those would be a subtitle. So that means that it's a title that goes under another title. It has, it's talking about the same thing. Do you like to look at illustrations as you read? That's pictures. Of course, everybody does. I did not have much time, so I had to skim through the book quickly. 
That means when you're just quickly looking through a book, generally my kids will look through a book to see how big the words are and if there's pictures, and that determines if they want to read the book or not. That's not a very good thing, but that's what they do. Okay, so let's look in our reader book on page uh, 214. It's a skill lesson over encyclopedias. Now, I'm going to learn about uh, uh, a quick way to look up uh, items and learn more about things. So uh, let's, I want you to read along with me. The word encyclopedia literally means many feet. A person has to walk through all the sentences, sciences to know everything. Ancient scholars thought that anything encyclopedic would contain all knowledge. Today, books that provide general information are called encyclopedias. Most encyclopedias list their information alphabetically. So the first thing you would do is use a keyword. You might want to learn more about the war that changed the lives of the children in when the war is over. An encyclopedia could help you. First, you would have to decide what keywords to use. You might try World War II or Hungary. The letter on the spine of each volume tells the part of the alphabet that it contains. So World War II would be in the W volume. Now using titles and subtitles. Some subjects are so broad, like Brazil, that encyclopedia writers organize them with subtitles. Usually, major subtitles appear in the center of the column or are capitalized. Minor subtitles are usually in dark, just dark print, but they're of normal size and they're not centered. Now, using illustrations and captions. Illustrations give you an idea of how a certain person, place, or event looked. The sentence underneath an illustration is called the caption. It explains what is going on in a picture. Captions provide an idea of what the article will cover. A careful reader can skim through an encyclopedia article by reading the captions. Now what about using computers? Computers offer a quick and easy way to access information. Once you load your program, you can type in your keyword. This will take you to the encyclopedia article. The article may offer a variety of media, pictures, sounds, or videos relating to that topic. Also, keywords in the article may be highlighted. By clicking on them, you will be able to access corresponding articles. If you have internet access, your encyclopedia software may have a web link. This was written way before the internet became very popular. So we're not even going to finish reading that. But I do want to show you, uh, there is an encyclopedia online. Let me see if I can get to it. It is World, uh, no, it's Britannica. Britannica.com. It's an online um, encyclopedia. I just kind of wanted to show you a little bit what it looks like. So Encyclopedia Britannica, okay. International Women's Day, it says, is March the 8th, whatever. Okay, here you can search. This is where you could type in whatever you wanted to type in. What if we wanted to learn about? See, here's lots of different Brazil stuff. We're just going to look at Brazil, see what's here. Okay, it gives us the flag, tells us a little bit about it. Here's some images, audio, video, lots of stuff here about Brazil. Then here's the contents. This is what you could read about. These would be considered your subtitles. The land, the people, the economy, administration and social, whatever, cultural life, history. These would be your subtitles about Brazil. Because Brazil is just a general topic. There's so much about Brazil. So anyway, I just wanted to show you the online encyclopedia that's there. Okay, let's look at our work text pages. We have two. One you're going to do by yourself and one I'm going to do with you. The one you're going to do by yourself, I just want to make sure you do understand the basic concept of an encyclopedia. And I almost didn't even do this lesson with you because I thought, eh, really just people don't even use encyclopedias anymore, but it's so important for you to know how to use them. All right, let's look at page 87. Now, there is a, uh, an article here uh, about fossils, and uh, it says at the bottom, it says to research it, and you're going to need um, 
crayons probably. You're going to need purple, red, blue, green, uh, and orange. So if you, or matte colors or matte pencils or whatever, just those different colors. If you need to pause it to go get those, go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and look at how this page is set out. And I want you to look at the very far top right. Do you see where it says fossil up there? Okay, you know in a dictionary when you look up words and you have those guide words at the top that tells you that you're on the right page or the wrong page? Well, that's kind of what that's called. That's kind of what that is. It tells you that the word fossil is found on that page. Now, do you notice the subtitles? Early discoveries, fossil records, and rebuilding fossils. Okay, do you see the picture? Look at the writing underneath the picture. That is called a caption. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and get our crayons or, or pencils or whatever you have. And let's look at number one. Circle the God word in purple. Remember, the God word is the word that tells you what's on that page. So that's going to be the word fossil up in the far right top corner. So with your purple crayon or pencil, circle the word fossil. Okay, number two. Circle the title of the article in red. The title of the article is Fossil. It's where it says it really big right there on the left side at the top. Circle that in red. Now draw a blue box around each subtitle. So you'll put a blue box around Early Discoveries and around Fossil Records and around Rebuilding Fossils. Okay. All right, now let's underline the caption in green. You see the caption there underneath the picture? Underline that in green. Okay, now you need an orange. Okay, underline the in orange the other keywords that you might look up to find corresponding articles. Okay, so let's look. Do you see where it says early discoveries? Do you see the name Herodotus? in there. It says 450 BC Herodotus. Okay, underline that in orange. That would be a word you could look up. If you looked up Herodotus, it might tell you a little bit about fossils. All right, look down where it says fossil records. Look at the last sentence under that where it says um, the space is called a mold. Underline mold with orange because you could look up the word mold. That might be a keyword. You could look that up and it'll tell you a little bit about fossils as well. Look over on the next side. You see the picture and look right above the picture. It says fills with sediment a cast forms. Underline cast in orange. That's another keyword you could look up to find more about fossils. And one more down near the bottom. Do you see the word paleontologist? Down almost at the bottom. Okay, underline paleontologist with your orange uh, marker or crayon. Okay, you could also look up the word paleontologist and it would give you some uh, ideas on fossils. Okay, so your assignment is to do page 88. And this page, I'm not going to grade this page, but I want to see it because it's going to let me know if you understand these um, encyclopedias or not, okay? All right, that's all for today.